dark stream. Are you going to stay on this time? I keep thinking of a show that I wanted to watch more of, but can't remember it. But then I just now remember it was that that project blew up. Yo, it's funny how you said that. I wanted to watch that today. I was thinking about it earlier. God, my thing. So random. You haven't been watching it? The mayor announced estimates Friday morning that about 13% of the population will be infected and 220 to more than 1,000 will die. I assume that's the next few months because there's nothing to stop the rest of the population from eventually being infected unless there's a vaccine or social distancing continues indefinitely or there's some kind of like huge testing where they can isolate, testing and isolating contacts and that kind of thing. Some kind of huge widespread testing kind of thing. She said a peak of cases is expected in DC somewhere around the end of June and beginning of July. Again, I just it's worth it's worth reminding people. Uh, look, the virus doesn't just go away. There is a virus out there. It's 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 spreading from person to person around the world. Uh, the virus will keep doing that. The only way to stop one, you create a vaccine which people can take, which prevents them from getting it. Two, uh, if the virus infects enough people, like 60% of the population, 60%, then once you've had it, in theory, you should not, you should be, you should be, you should be, uh, you should be unable to get it again. You should be protected against getting it again once you've already had it. So if 60% of the world's population has it, then this thing happens called herd immunity, which is enough people have it, have had it already, that it's hard for the virus to keep spreading. Uh, but aside from that, the virus, aside from the vaccine or herd immunity, the virus is going to keep spreading. Now, if everybody stays home by themselves in their apartment or house, yeah, that can keep it from spreading, but that will have to keep going until there's a vaccine or until 50% of the people get it. Uh, also, you know, you could do something like if there's really widespread testing, uh, and good monitoring of, of, of people. You could do a thing where you widely test people uh, and then you, you make sure only people who have had it already can go back to work. And for other people, you know, you, 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 you really get on top of it. So if somebody tests positive, uh, you isolate them right away and then you have to find all of their close recent contacts and you have to make them isolate right away. So, but, there's this idea that this is going to be, you know, oh, in a month, it'll be, for two months, it'll just be over. It, it doesn't work that way. Eventually, either, uh, eventually in the long run, assuming everybody's not social distancing forever, either about 60% of people have to get it, or uh, there needs to be a vaccine. That's how it works.
That's just the unfortunate truth. Why is it such brushes? No, I need a, a bigger brush. For brush. I saw this today. Official yeah, Chinese statistics for Wuhan's yeah, coronavirus death toll at 2563. Evidence coming out of the city suggests just, it was actually more than 40,000. That. Really That's from Anna Fifield, Washington Post. Chinese families should be sweeping graves now, but yeah, thousands still haven't buried well. their dead. Yeah. I'm the coronavirus pandemic uh, officially claimed about 2,500 lives in Wuhan, where it, where it began. But evidence emerging from the city uh, suggests the real death toll is exponentially higher. Long lines have been forming at funeral homes in Wuhan over the last two weeks as family members have been informed they may collect their loved one's remains ahead of tomb sweeping day. Some waited six hours to collect an urn, then the ashes. Uh, this crematorium was operating 19 hours a day with male staff enlisted to help carry bodies. In just two days, the home received 5,000 urns, said the respected magazine Kaijin. Using photos posted online, social media sleuths have estimated that Wuhan funeral homes have returned 3,500 urns a day since March 23rd. That would imply a death toll in Wuhan of about 42,000, or 16 times the official number. Another widely shared calculation, based on 80, Wuhan's 84 furnaces running nonstop and each cremation taking an hour, puts the death toll at 46,800. Wuhan residents say the activities of the line misrepresent the official statistics or, or aren't, uh, seem to suggest that the official statistics are, are, are wrong. It can't be right because the incinerators have been working around the clock, so how can so few people have died, said a man to Radio, Radio Free Asia. Also, deaths not counted as coronavirus. There's lots of reporting of people in China who died who were never tested. This person was never tested for the coronavirus, but the family has no doubt that the novel pathogen led to his death. Other families in Wuhan report similar experiences. See me. See me, says, and that's just Wuhan. So we are going, it's 4.25 p.m. right now. Uh, the White House press briefing is going to be at 5 p.m., so we will have that. And uh, we're taking your comments, questions, uh, giving you updates on the air at Lookner on Twitter is where you can write to me. Thank you, by the way, to Jennifer Small for your support. Thank you, Jennifer Small. And my blank is stinky. Thank you. And Billy Blue, thank you. My blank is stinky. <laughs> Jennifer thinks not enough attention is being paid to the danger of confined populated spaces. Our viewer, Rita, we were talking about Sun Valley, Idaho before as a place where there are a lot of corona cases. Uh, and 
Rita says, big money in Sun Valley where Bruce Willis and Demi Moore live. I had a friend who worked at Bruce's bar before it was closed. Another article. Tourists brought prosperity to an Idaho ski valley. They also brought COVID-19 mm. from the Washington Post. The Sun Valley. Oh, this, no, this is Wood River Valley. That's not Sun Valley. No, Sun Valley Resort. Sun Valley, Blaine County, home to Sun Valley Ski Resort, uh, the city of Ketchum, and the uh, Idaho. This part is boring as shit, guys. I'm just, I'm just painting the white part. Region. White. The ski I ain't really doing shit right country. now. It's a top destination on the continent circuit. Why don't you just leave it white? Because it, it, it'll fade and yellow over time without the paint being on it. Dirt will get stuck on it and all kind of shit. So even so though it's, well, it's just white, I still want to paint it white anyway. It. And I have to do that part before I can start working on the gold leaf and other parts of the background. Oh. Health experts say visitors from Seattle probably brought, the Seattle area probably brought it to Idaho in the early days of the pandemic. Hey, thanks George Sybil for your support. Thank you, George Sybil. I appreciate it, George. Thank you. Appreciate it, George. Thank you for your support. Tom Winter says, new cases jump in Massachusetts with 1,436 new cases taking the state over 10,000. 38 new deaths reported in Massachusetts. Let's get an update about Massachusetts. There it is. Death toll rises to 192. Uh, so more testing being done in Massachusetts. Well, it says about six, well, I don't know if it's more, it says about, about 6,300 people got tested yesterday, it looks like, 6,300, and 1,436 were positive. In Massachusetts, they're going to try to step up their effort to trace the contacts of people who've tested positive. The governor said it would be a first-in-the-nation effort that would break new ground in the fight against the pandemic. Enhanced tracing capability is enormously powerful for public health officials to rely on their battle against the pandemic. So the idea is if somebody gets it, you figure out who their recent contacts are, and you... Uh, get in touch with them and see if they have symptoms and maybe you quarantine them. Uh, so the state will be contacting close contacts of people who get it uh, and then contacting them uh, so they can self-quarantine or get treatment. Is there a treatment already? Are we talking about vaccines or... Let's look at the Massachusetts numbers. Already look. I, I I don't know. I don't have a site that shows, like Worldometer gives you daily graphs of cases and deaths for all the countries, but not for the states. I'd love to have that for each state. And then Illinois had a bunch of new cases, I believe. Let's see. 
Massachusetts, 1438 new cases, 38 deaths. Uh, we talked about Louisiana, 60 deaths, Michigan, 52. Uh, Illinois had 53 new deaths and 1209 new cases. I think Pennsylvania actually announced a total of over 1,400 cases today. Uh, let's see, 24 deaths by the way. The tug says, I've been keeping track day by day of Massachusetts cases since March 5th. The past week has been bad. Uh, in biggest one-day jump yet, 1209 new cases in Illinois and 53 more deaths across the state. This is from Chicago Tribune. It says, this is the biggest jump in both cases and deaths uh, uh, in Illinois, a daily jump. Now, the cases might be a, you know, due to more testing, but the deaths... I assume it's just because it's more people dying. Uh, the first loss of a Chicago police officer linked to COVID will be considered an on-duty death, giving the officer's family access to special financial benefits. Let's see here. Trevor says, how are cases and deaths going higher if everyone has been quarantined for a while now? Well, first of all, when there's social distancing, it takes several weeks for social distancing to be reflected in the numbers. So, uh, because normally what would happen is if you got the virus, it would take, it could take, it could take days, uh, day, it could take a number of days to get the symptoms. And then uh, you might not be able to get tested right away. It might take you a number of days to get that tested. And then there's been, there's been huge delays with testing. Uh, there's reports that some people have had up to, you know, you know, I've seen reports of 12, 13 days waiting to get their test back. So um, the, the, the test results people are getting now, uh, somebody who gets a test result back today uh, could be somebody who got the virus three, four weeks ago, for all you know. So the, te the, the, the test results coming out today are not people who got the virus today and not people who got the virus yesterday. Probably a lot of them are people who got the virus weeks ago. So it, there's a delay of weeks uh, between when social distancing starts and when the number of cases levels off. But also remember... It's not the case that everybody in the country and everybody in the world has been sitting in their room by themselves. People live with family members. So one reason cited for the large number of cases in Queens, New York, where they've had a ton of cases, is that people live, tend to, there's a lot of people who live like in an apartment or a house, a uh, large group of people living together. They don't each have a room to themselves. You could have multiple families living in one housing unit. Um, and so even if they're sitting at home, they can spread it. Also, plenty of people haven't been totally isolating. They're going to work, or they're traveling, or they're just not respecting the curfew. Uh, so, uh, you know, you're st you still get spread. Oh, update here. CBS Denver, Denver, Governor of Colorado, look at this. Governor of Colorado asks Coloradans to wear non-medical cloth masks or a scarf when going out in public for essential services. Should cover your mouth and nose, then throw them in a warm wash when you return home. That's the Governor of Colorado. That's from CBS Denver. Okay. So you 
I'm watching this shit every day, nigga. Twice a day. <clears throat> so now they're just making people think it's all airborne. Just hey, thanks, by the way, air. from uh, Elizabeth you Young. Your nose and mouth. Thank you so much, Elizabeth Young, for your support. I appreciate it. Thank you, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. I thought that should have been was airborne. Anything is usually airborne. Says, yep, that's our government. Yeah. sneezes in the air. But then they're at first they're saying, oh, you don't need to really wear a mask. You know, all you need to do is just keep your hands clean and don't touch your face as often. And now they're saying, oh, don't leave out the house without covering your nose and mouth. I said, that's Everybody like I listen to this shit every day because shit changes day a little to day. bit of everything, yeah? Yeah. But then that's also too, it's like different states. That's what the governor of Colorado said. You know, is New York governor telling them people to make sure you cover your nose and mouth or PA, they ain't telling us to do that shit here. I said every state is doing like their own little thing. Nobody has like a national overall plan on except this social distance and quarantine. All right, give me a shout out a few comments, questions, updates at Lookner on Twitter. Other updates. So many updates to give. One of our viewers asked about Indonesia. Uh, it looks like they announced a bunch of deaths. This says 100, oh no, that's 11. 11 deaths. That was 181. Uh, 11 deaths. Okay. 22 deaths, new deaths in Algeria. There's just, I mean, I've been saying this again and again and again, but there's all these different countries. It's, it's spreading around the world. And I, I, I've been saying that, you know, it's just, you don't know what the reporting is like in different countries. Uh, you can have some country where they don't have a very good health system and, not, and, and they're not really tracking this very well, and they can have tons of cases there. So I just fully expect to just hear about more and more large outbreaks in various countries, unfortunately. Oh, we didn't talk about Spain. According to BNO, they had another bad day. Let's see here. Where's Spain? I thought they had something for Spain. Did they not? Maybe they didn't. I thought they did. Let's look this up. Spain briefly passes Italy in COVID cases, but officials see growth rate slow. NPR. Uh, Spain, blah, 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 blah. The country's daily death toll has gone over 800 for seven consecutive days, reaching a record. Okay, so check this out. Spain's daily death toll has been over 800 for seven consecutive days, reaching a record 950 in 24 hours on Thursday. Italy's daily deaths are now under 800 following weeks when they were higher. I saw an interesting uh, you know, comment on this. Someone on Twitter commented, they, they were reading about how, somebody had posted about how Italy's death had gone down into the 700s, and they were saying something like, well, does that just mean that maybe the hospitals are, are, are able to better take care of it now? So, you know, th there's different reasons the death rate could go uh, up or down. Uh, it's, you know, for example, what, what the hospital capabilities are. So you have to be careful about reading too much into just the pure death numbers. Uh, 
Uh, you can imagine different reasons why death numbers might fluctuate. So, but eventually, you know, things should level off if you're doing it, given the lockdowns going on in, in, in various countries. Despite the increase of Spain's figures suggest the rate of new cases in the country has begun to slow. But are they testing more? Like if you're just talking about number, if you're talking about the, if you're talking about the new cases only going up by a certain amount, going up by less than they did before, well, if if you test the same amount, if you test the same amount of people every day, then just if you do the math, if, if you get a thousand new cases every day, right, because you're only testing like two thousand people or two thousand people every day, then if you just do the math the percent increase in cases will be less every day because you're starting every new day with more cases. So just because just because the just because you're adding a lesser percent of new cases every day doesn't mean the cases are going down. It could be the case that you're just not testing enough. It could be the case that you're all, you're testing that that you're just reaching a, a, a ceiling for new cases in a day based on a testing level. So I, again, as, as I've said again and again in the last few days, just looking at case new cases each day doesn't tell you today. Are they testing different types of people from day to day? But if you just look at the individual case, new case numbers, that alone doesn't tell you anything because the testing could be the, the case numbers could be varying depending on the testing. Some healthcare workers say Spain could be undercounting cases because of a lack of available testing. They say intensive care units are beyond capacity, and it's not keeping up with the number of patients. Thousands of medical workers, the country's, uh, including the doctor leading the country's response, have become infected. What else, Scott? So things not good in Spain. All right. Let me know your thoughts at Lookner on Twitter. It is 444, and um. I'm assuming the briefing won't start on time because it never does. There's a briefing scheduled Let's for 5 see. p.m. I don't have a straw or. Okay. Hey, let me also say a quick thanks to our moderators. Our moderators are amazing. Be right they back, are guys. fantastic. Uh, they're all volunteers. So thanks to the moderators. We have Eddie Smith in our YouTube chat. Uh, and Jordan. Thank you, Jordan, for moderating. Chandra is moderating, too. Barbara Smith. Thanks to all of our YouTube moderators. Our Twitch moderators, our Periscope moderators, JKD, Sharon Craig, Linda Bell. Thanks to all of them. Texas Legends, Brian. And any, any others I'm missing as well. Thanks to all of our Periscope moderators. Our Facebook moderators, uh, Courtney Lane, Kimberly Peterson, Shay Turner, Denise Fredrickson, Joe Serino, Dan Lindquist. Thank you, Facebook moderators. Thank you also, Twitch moderators. Daily Disclosure, Matthew Johnson, Idaho Star, Keisha, Callie, Smoke, Love Pugs, XXD, Sully, Rift Tracks. Thank you. Thanks also to our Discord moderators, too. If anybody's interested in being a volunteer moderator, we can always use more moderators. Uh, you can find out more about being a moderator by uh, there's an email address that the mods can give you. Uh, the mods can tell you the email address to write you to get more info on being a moderator. So thank you, Mom. Well, thanks I'm also for your support. I'm going to see um, it does what you want to do. Amy Dressler. Uh, Miss Amy on YouTube. Thank you, Miss Amy on YouTube for your support. Miss Amy on YouTube. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I've never used this or anything. I don't want that. I could use that for something else, though. I thought I had another paper palette. 
Oh, you know, we should talk. I've been meaning to talk about this for two days. I keep forgetting yeah. to talk about it. It's hard to get one without uh, taking There's information right there. about oh, really made to go in um, order. People about in New York, in New York City, which people, which which neighborhoods are being hardly hard, hard, hard hit by the virus. Oh, and let me just show you this real quick. Uh, more LA County, similar numbers to yesterday. 521 new cases and 11 new deaths in LA County. Not good. Let's talk about here it is. New York neighborhoods with the most cases. Working class and orthodox Jewish neighborhoods in Queens and Brooklyn are among the city's hardest hit areas, according to new data. It's from Wall Street Journal. It's getting the Jews. Run, Jew. The new coronavirus has struck hardest in working class neighborhoods in New York City's outer boroughs, city data shows, underlying how the pandemic has ravaged densely packed lower income areas where social distancing guidelines have proved different to implement. You know, there are certain neighborhoods where you're going to have people living closer together, where you might have more people living in a given apartment or house, uh, where people might uh, not uh, be able to take work off because they don't have as much money, they don't have money saved and they need to still go to work. Uh, there's that. Also, uh, I know we were talking about Lakewood, New Jersey, which is a, I believe about 70 to 70 percent Orthodox to. Jewish. Uh, like they've they had, had um, the yeah. police there have repeatedly over the last week had to uh, stop, they've broken up a big group events, uh, Orthodox Jewish group events like a bat mitzvah, and a funeral, and weddings, and this kind of stuff. So there could be cultural reasons why certain groups in a certain, uh, certain neighborhoods have more strong, people yeah. who are still congregating together and not respecting the, sta right, you know, so the, the rules, the stay home gonna be rules. Um, about but, uh, Bible. You know, there, those, those, those are some of the factors that could affect whether people in certain you neighborhoods... You got a gold straw, though. That might be art in itself. Uh, gold, two I areas in Queens, Corona and Elmhurst, have led the city in reporting gold infections. Iphone. Both neighborhoods are heavily populated by immigrants who live in close uh -huh. quarters, often with multiple families sharing a dwelling. Many residents there don't have the luxury to telecommute because they work in the hospitality industry at restaurants or supermarkets. Right, where is this? So they can't just, you know, work on, they can't just work from home. Mm -hmm. One, of those, that One person on gets sick, it spreads yeah, around that house. Yeah, that's why I tried to keep those. Said a city council. Here's I just never took it out. Uh, this health out. expert said, mm -hmm. It's difficult for some people to isolate and maintain what? social There's distancing. There's one that's just that brand that's virus, that's empty. In the hardest hit neighborhoods Washed in out and everything that happened. Yeah. We have multiple water. families living together in a very small apartment, so it's easy to understand why there's a lot of transmission. Oh, that one? I can use that one still. The virus also appears to have preyed upon the tight bound bonds of itself. faith, family, uh, and community that connect Orthodox to the neighborhoods in Brooklyn. The Bur Brooklyn's two most heavily affected neighborhoods are both heavily Orthodox Jewish. Heard no word on whether. What? Oh, look at this. Uh, BNO Delta Airlines says it's burning through 60 million in cash every day. Forecast 90% fall in revenue in second quarter.
Right, so I haven't heard yet about whether um, the press briefing is going to start remotely on time. What well, we should talk about the um, Theodore Roosevelt, the USS Roosevelt yeah, aircraft. Was, right was it? You said cleaned out? Yeah, I said I cleaned it out and I put water in it before to do my own hair. Oh. This must have had a little bit. Of, this was the cleanest one, but it had stuff in it too. Yeah. Today's Let's news. Sent me a link. Today's news. If you're watching, your graph doesn't work. The link doesn't work that you sent. Me. All right, damn it, that's the only thing, yo. I'm gonna have to pour a lot of that ink in here. I don't mm. want to waste a good bit of it. Yeah. Let's get a dog race. writes in and says, I listened to a brush. bit of the WHO conference oh, today. One of the most important points was the need for careful surveillance, oh, like especially during the second round of the disease. Mm -hmm. Not sure how that will play out in the U.S. but I'm for it. Yo, Michael and Ingrid, what's up, guys? Update our numbers. BNO one oh nine six six oh seven and then two seven one five two eight. Two seven one five two eight cases and then one oh nine six six oh seven case US cases and world cases. Done. Hmm. I wonder if I can, maybe if I just put this right into the ink. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm waiting for, see what's going on with the briefing. Oh, this is terrible. Uh, three more residents at a senior liver, living facility in Revere have died, and seven more have tested positive. As of Friday, there were a total of seven people at this senior living facility who have died and 20 who have tested positive. The Jack Satter House Senior Living Facility in Revere, Massachusetts. So seven have died from coronavirus there, and 20 have tested positive. That's from uh, 7 News Boston. Oh, this is awful, too. Look at this. Look at this. 15 of 21 deaths at Holyoke Mass Soldiers Home linked to coronavirus. 21 veterans have died at this soldier's home, veteran's home in Holyoke, Mass. 15 deaths have been linked to the, have been tested, have, have been directly linked. Dozens more have tested positive. Wow.
59 other veterans have now tested positive for the virus there. Terrible. That's in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, Holyoke, Mass. Condolences to all their families. It's really awful. Missing in Chesapeake Bay. Kathleen Kennedy Townsend's 41 year old daughter and eight year old grandson remain missing. Ken Kathleen Kennedy Townsend is the daughter of Rob RFK, Robert F. Kennedy. So Robert F. Kennedy's granddaughter and great grandson are missing in, in, after boating in Maryland. hope they're found alive. Oh, we should talk about Singapore, too. So Singapore has been seen as a country which has really been good in their tracking of cases Mike. and the way they've managed this, but they are now going under uh, lockdown. Before you actually uh, gonna Singapore to close schools, yeah. most workplaces like the rise in virus going cases. Out. Yeah. And then, like... On it as well. I'm just trying to see Increase how close or far do I have to be. I feel like you might have to be very, far. Very you think if I, you get some newspaper and cover hers? It's from Bloomberg. Singapore will close shutter schools and, and like most workplaces as they will unveil a, ra a raft of stricter measures to slow the spread of coronavirus. Shifting away from an approach crafted to limit interruptions to daily life and commerce. I believe they have not done these measures yet. Most workplaces will close starting on Tuesday, and the city will close all schools, and kids will get schooled from home. The action comes as confirmed cases of local transmission and unlinked infections in the country have risen in recent weeks. Singapore's tougher moves signal that its current approach, relying on contract tracing, strict containment measures such as shutting bars and quarantine, is no longer tenable. While more than 160 countries had already shut schools, the city-state was one of only a handful that have not done so, citing early research that children are not as effective as adults. Again, there is a White House press briefing coming up. We'll bring that to you live.
Steve Herman posted this awaiting the daily White House port, port, port task force press briefing. Uh, the president will be making remarks. Oh, Hobby Lobby is temporarily closing all stores after remaining open despite stay-at-home orders across the country. Nearly all employees will be furloughed without pay, effective tonight. Hobby Lobby is temporarily closing stores in response to the virus after reopening despite stay-at-home orders across the country. I'd have to retweet that. That's from Fox 13 Tampa Bay. There had been some controversy over Hobby Lobby stores remaining open in areas where they had stayed home. Power Matt says, I don't know why they closed Walmart at night. It only makes crowding easier. People could have uh, went shopping at night. Now, I think at night gives people fewer options uh, of time of day to go shopping. Um, I would, I prefer to go later at night, but you can't now. But uh, maybe, maybe it's the, I mean, one, uh, supposedly it's to restock, but also I wonder if any of it is to, like, they don't want the restocking employees out there as people are shopping to uh, restrict interaction between the employees doing the restocking and the people. So, I don't know, I don't know, I've never really read anything uh, a definitive about why uh, the stores have all done that. I think they, I remember reading that the same, well, we're using the extra time to restock. Maybe they just have more groceries to restock. So this is uh, an article from CNN saying Kroger, Publix, and other grocery stores are changing hours. This is from March 15th. But it says reduced hours will give them more time to clean stores, restock, and keep workers healthy. Snowfeet says it's for restocking and cleaning. Paint is wet, so it might just. Mm. How do you even get that in there? It's how you find it. Huh? It's how you clean it. Why don't you use a, a paintbrush to make it come on? Okay, let's see here. Um, yeah, and like let it stick to a paintbrush and that hit the paintbrush. That's why I said that. Oh, the briefing is at 5.30. Unsurprisingly, the briefing is now at 5.30. Anyone, really, but this, you can flick it out in your hand. You're Tyson. Let me show you this. Let's Yo, from New York. Here. First of all, some viewers mentioned this, Walmart to limit number of customers in stores. Fox 40. Walmart announced it will limit the number of customers allowed in its stores. Once a store reaches capacity, customers will be asked to stand in lines outside of the store. 
That has happened at, uh, there's a supermarket near me where they're doing that. That starts tomorrow. I can't see with that bomb in the way. He said he got to change his name. He's from North Carolina now. <laughs> He's been from, saying that. TikTok. Tyson from NC. WNDO says Walmart will start limiting stores to 20% capacity. Changes to our shopping process to encourage social distancing. Uh, Walmart stores will now uh, will now limit. Walmart stores now to limit the number of customers. Stores will now allow for more than no more than five customers for each thousand square feet at a given time, roughly 20% of the store's capacity. I wonder if they posted it on their um, Twitter account. limit number of customers in their stores to Hey bro, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing right now. I couldn't even explain this to you if I was. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she just told me what to do. Yeah, I'm hey. giving him the tips. He's trying to sprinkle it out the back so a whole pile could fall on one spot. I gotta use a brush. Maybe it might work. And it is starting to give an effect. You just gotta go slow. Well, Add man. more where you want it to have. Yeah, uh, uh. Hey man, I'm experimenting right now. We all about to learn this. Put the bag down. Maybe time. use your finger on the actual paintbrush to make the glitter fall off. No, like run, run. This shit stick to your hand. I don't want this shit all over. With one finger, you understand what I'm trying to say? I understand what you say. I don't think so. You want to come do this? Not on camera. Y'all heard that? Wow. Yeah, I don't like cameras. There will be a single entry door. The customers will have to wait. Once store, a store reaches its capacity, so what, what I want to do is is to have a a kind of a diffusion or a dispersal or an explosion effect. So I'm gonna overlay the the gold circle with actual gold leaf, but I want it to look like it's dissipating and and spanning out from the solid circle and then breaking off into little like rays or particles as it comes out, which, as it comes you know toward the edge of the canvas. Once the store, once the store reaches its capacity, I'm losing all kind of gold. Yeah, this shit is snowing gold. see my vision. I don't see your vision, but... And here is something about, uh, you may have heard about this. Yeah. I'm telling you, use your finger. Uh, so the, the, the U.S. aircraft carrier, USS Theodore Roosevelt, has, I believe now, 137 <laughs> cases <laughs> of coronavirus <laughs> among its around 5,000 sailors. And uh, a couple days ago, the captain of uh, the ship uh, wrote a letter to his superiors in the Navy pleading for help 
getting sailors off that ship because they were all still on the ship and the outbreak was spreading. Well, uh, yesterday the captain of the ship was relieved of his duties by the Navy, who did not like that he uh, leaked this letter publicly. Uh, so uh, in the past, I guess like today at some point, I don't know if it's today calendar day, but this came out this morning, uh, as the commander, as the, as the uh, captain was leaving the ship, um, uh, a lot of the crew gathered and cheered for him. So you can see here, Phil Stewart says, doesn't look like the crew of the Theodore Roosevelt uh, agree with the Navy's That's assessment of their commander. Yeah. Um, and then uh, this is posted by Dylan Castillo. There's a bunch of videos posted of this uh, that are similar, but here's uh, uh, the, uh, some of the crew of the Theodore Roosevelt, members of the crew cheering for the uh, Commander Crozier, or Captain Crozier. Is it Commander or Captain? I'll have to look. <laughs> Captain Crozer, is that what it is? I thought he said Crawford. Hold on, I'll show you one. Yeah, Captain Crozer. Hundreds were pictured in the gathering in the aircraft carrier's hangar deck, and many chanted Captain Brett Crozier's name. That's from Stars and Stripes. Captain Crozier, Captain Crozier, video show sailors sending off ousted USS Roosevelt commander with cheers. A cheering and applauding crowd of sailors aboard the U.S. Ca aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt wish farewell to their captain, whom the Navy relieved of command after he raised concerns about the spreading coronavirus on his ship in a letter that was leaked to the media. A video posted to the Facebook page of Michael Washington included the hashtags MyCo in my CO and we we are we are T R strong. And that's how you still know one of the greatest captains you ever had. Stars and Stripes, and read the, read more about that. Now, by the way, I know some viewers, I, I, people online have commented that in those videos, you see people on the ship packed together, which is obviously not social distancing. That is true. Although, be remember, though, uh, what the captain said in his letter to his superiors is he said, look, there's just no way to social distance on this ship, basically, he said, because we have 5,000 people on the ship, and the ship is not designed to be big enough so that people can social distance. So uh, not social distancing is part of their life on the ship. Just that, That's what it's like there, because there's so many people on board. So, so I do understand the concern about all the people gathering there. You know, I don't certainly... You'd like to see them not all gathering. At the same time, it is part of their everyday life to be, they sleep together, work together, live together, you know. So the captain himself said in that letter, there's just no way to have them social distance while they're on, while they're on the ship. Katrina Jones says it's a naval ship. There's no way to do it. Hey, thanks so much to Viticus Rising for your support. I appreciate it. Viticus Rising, thank you. Uh, thank you also to Kurt Foster. Now. He was like, much appreciated, Kurt. Thank you so much, Kurt. And thank you also. Thanks for your support. Um, JM, I appreciate your support. 
JM. Thank you, JM. Thanks also for the uh, super hearts. Rob Van Roy, Hannah, 420 Prince, Deb H, Katie Beth, Peter, and L. Got the 420 thank Prince. Thank you, and everyone else for the super hearts, and thank you for the Facebook stars. Christina M. Zito, Stephen Matuk, Linda S. Olson Epperson, Ann Wen, Sherry McInnes, Don Van Eve, Ann Wen again, Elena Murphy, Tony Waters, uh, Tracy Jones, Patrick and Melanie Waltman, Damian Cohn, and Amy Tompkins Concord. Thank you. Uh, there is a White House briefing coming up in 13 minutes. By the way, Sky News reports, uh, Queen of England, Queen of UK, right? Uh, is the Queen the Queen of the UK or England? How does it work? Queen of the United Kingdom. Oh yeah, this is going to be so nice. If I can get it, the coverage how I want, Queen seeks like to lift to spirits in significant Sunday address to nation. So the Queen is going to speak to the country on Sunday. Sunday night at 8 p.m. And that's why I think I need to go ahead and get this part done before I do too much more painting. posting these graphs. He's with Financial Times. Uh, and what the graphs show is just the official death statistics. Each, each place you get a line of, of when the death started in, in, the, in the number of days. So um, he's saying urban U.S. set to be the new epicenter, London's death toll still rising, but on a similar slope to Paris, Catalonia, and Madrid at this stage, shallower than U.S. counterparts. So what he's showing you is that... Um, um, they the craft smart belief. Now, it's a certain scale here. I, forget, I don't know what this kind of scale is called, but notice it's, it's 20, 50, 100. It's, it like doubles. Is it a logarithmic scale? So, but there's two different kinds. So you can buy it. Just see how it's, see like how it's this, not. Where it's like flakes. Every line or you can is buy a doubling. A whole pretty much. Doubling, doubling, that kind of thing. But, anyways, if you want to look at that, you can go to John Byrne Murdoch. I don't really, I would have to know a lot more and research it more and know more about statistics to be able to look at that and really, really uh, understand, really draw conclusions from it. But you can go look at it if you want. Uh, he does say, though, he says, new chart for tonight, small multiples of daily deaths in, in subnational regions. He says, some of those U.S. state curves are alarmingly steep. He also says, the problem is, though, he says much flatter curves and warmer and more humid countries, Egypt and Iraq. The problem, see, what I don't like is Egypt, the, Egypt is not accurately reporting their deaths. They have not been. I feel very confident in saying that. Iraq, I would not be surprised if Iraq is not reporting their deaths accurately. And, and if they, and, and who knows, maybe they just, or, or if they just don't have the capacity to. 
So once you start, com you know, comparing all these countries, you, you, you're all you, you're just using their official figures. So the graph is only as good as the official figures are. So I, I don't really like when they compare it to like Egypt. Why should we trust the Egypt numbers? COVID tra tracking project is saying uh, that it looks like to them that about 140,000 people were tested in the past day in the U.S., uh, which is a jump. In the last week in the U.S., from day to day, the number of people tested has been around 100,000, 110,000, uh, but it's up to 140,000 in the past day tested in the U.S., Wow, none of that fell where I wanted it. <laughs> oh, Lars Anderson from Sweden. Thank you, Lars. Lars says the Swedish king will also speak to the people. I wonder if they're finally going to do a lockdown in Sweden. They haven't so far. Sweden's still a monarchy? I didn't know that they still had a king. Give me a shout with your comments, questions, updates, at Lookner. Uh Yes, Joe Ogden, we did mention the two missing people from the Kennedy family in Maryland. We mentioned that a little earlier. Thank you, Joe Ogden. Uh, as I said, I hope they're found. Thank you, Joe, for your support. Uh, New York just sent out an emergency alert. Kate Hines said, did your phone just go off too? Uh, emergency alert on people's phones in, I guess, New York City, maybe? Um, New York City is seeking licensed healthcare workers to support healthcare facilities in need. Maybe it's New York State. I don't know who got it. Uh, this is not good. I'm oh, sorry. This person Gabe posted about, I don't know who this person is. He was retweeted by somebody I know. Well, hold on. Oh, wait, here we go. We're going to have to watch. We're going we're gonna to check this out. All right, so we're going to watch this, and then um, I will... Uh, I will be back, and I'll, I'll actually probably grab a snack right now because I haven't eaten anything. So uh, we'll play this for a bit, and then uh, I will be back on the air. I just had a meeting with Kevin McCarthy, future Speaker of the House, I hope, and uh, he's done a fantastic job for the people of California, and also the people of California have done a fantastic job. When you look at the, uh, at the bump, you take a look at the bump and how they're doing out there, so I congratulate everybody out there, but I thought I'd have Kevin say a few words, so Kevin, please. Well, thank you, Mr. President, and uh, I would like to thank you on based of California. Governor Newsom says the work that you're doing together has been working very closely 
has been effective in California as well, the Vice President and the President. You know, today, Mr. President, I want to thank you especially for um, the work that Secretary Mnuchin has done, especially for small businesses. Just today alone, I saw Bank of America had more than 10,000 loans in two hours. And for anybody who's in small business, I first small business when I was 20 years old. You don't have income coming in right now. You get a loan, but for your rent, paying your employees and paying your utilities is a grant. That's part of the CARES Act. And I think you're going to find that a lot of small businesses are going to hire people back, keep them afloat through the next two months, and get this economy moving again as we get through this virus. So I just want to thank you for all that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you go ahead. I'll talk to you later. All right. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. And I want to start by saying that our hearts go out to the people of New York as they bear the brunt of the coronavirus pandemic. In New York don't catch no breaks. So. Right now, but you have some others, as you know, that are New York very don't very get bad. no time off. Louisiana is getting hit very hard. Parts of Michigan are getting hit very, very hard. New Jersey is, uh, is uh, surprisingly, it's much greater than anybody would have thought. They're doing a really good job. Governor's doing a really good job out there. Uh, New York's first responders, EMTs, doctors, nurses are showing incredible courage under pressure. Where are those sheets at? They're the best in the world. Gold we uh, will take every action and I got a, spare I got, no resource, that? financial, um, medical, scientific. We will not spare um, anything. We'll get it back into shape. The Empire State, the governor's doing an excellent job. They're all working very hard together. I, at the request of the governor, as you know, uh, the Javits Center, we have 2,500 beds, and we're going to allow that to be a, uh, a system where this horrible disease can be uh, looked after, the patients can be looked after. That's what I want to do now, before I finish painting, so I can just paint over. For regular medical problems, such as accidents. Like I said, I actually did want, like, you know, some little gold accidents. Like accidents we're not too many accidents. Maybe we're too many people driving. Or a jury or something. So we're going to... Uh, put that facility into play, which is a big facility. Uh, the ship will be staying the way it is, but we're putting that facility into play to help them. And today also the CDC is announcing additional steps Americans can take to defend against the transmission of the virus. From recent studies, we know that the transmission from individuals without symptoms is playing a more significant role in the spread of the virus than previously understood. So you don't seem to have symptoms and it still gets transferred. In light of these studies, the CDC is advising the use of non-medical cloth face covering as an additional voluntary public health measure. So it's voluntary. You don't have to do it. They suggest it for a period of time, but uh, this is voluntary. I don't think I'm going to be doing it, but you have a lot of ways you can look at it as follows. The CDC is recommending that Americans wear a basic cloth or fabric mask. They can be either purchased online or simply made at home, probably material that you'd have at home. These face coverings can be easily washed or reused. I want to emphasize that the CDC is not recommending the use of medical grade or surgical grade masks, and we want that to be used for our great medical people that are working so hard and doing some job. Medical protective gear must be reserved for the frontline healthcare workers who are performing those vital services. Uh, the new mask guidelines also put in place CDC's guidance on social distancing, including staying in your home when possible, standing at least six feet apart for a period of time. Again, we're going to all come back together here. We're going to all come back together and practicing hand hygiene, which we should do anyway. A lot of things, I think, are going to spill over. Uh, shaking hands, maybe we'll stay with our country for a long time beyond this. One of, the, one of our great doctors was telling me that, as you know, we have flus every year. And the number of people uh, killed by the flu is very substantial said that if they didn't shake hands, that number would be substantially lower. So maybe it'll stay, maybe some of these things long term will be good. But those guidelines are still the best and the safest way to avoid the infection.
So with uh, the masks, it's going to be uh, really a voluntary thing. You can do it. You don't have to do it. I'm choosing not to do it, but some people may want to do it, and that's okay. It may be good. Probably will. They make it a recommendation. It's only a recommendation. It's voluntary. We also take an action to ensure the cost of no barrier to any American seeking testing or treatment of the coronavirus, the largest insurer nationwide. The Blue Cross Blue Shield system has now announced that it will not require any co-pays, which is really something. That's a tremendous statement from patients of the virus treatment for the next 60 days, similar to the commitments of Cigna, Humana, Anthem. Those are great companies, and they're all doing the same thing. So co-pays for them to do that is a big statement. We appreciate it. Today, I can so proudly announce that hospitals and healthcare providers treating uninsured coronavirus patients will be reimbursed by the federal government using funds from the economic relief package Congress passed last month. So that was as per the question yesterday and actually the day before yesterday. This should alleviate any concern uninsured Americans may have about seeking the coronavirus treatment. So that's, I think, answers the question pretty well and very much in the favor of our great people. I'm also signing a directive invoking the Defense Production Act to prohibit export of scarce health and medical supplies by unscrupulous actors and profiteers, the security and secretary. The Secretary of Homeland Security will work with FEMA to prevent the export of N95 respirators, surgical masks, gloves, and other personal protective equipment. We need these items immediately for domestic use. We have to have them. But we've done really well with uh, the purchase of items, and you'll be hearing about that shortly. We've already leveraged the DPA to stop the hoarding and price gouging of crucial supplies. Under that authority, this week, the Department of Health and Human Services, working with the Department of Justice, took custody of nearly 200,000 N95 respirators, 130,000 surgical masks, 600,000 gloves, as well as bottles, many, many, many bottles this is why I need and disinfectant to sprays yeah, that were being it? hoarded. Yes, sir. All yes, of this material is now being yeah, given to healthcare workers. Most of it's already okay. been given out. And we've given a lot to New York, a lot to New Jersey, a lot to other places. In addition to ensure that healthcare workers in New York have the protective equipment they need, the federal government, in the name of the Department of Defense, is providing about 8.1 million N95 respirators, Department of Defense. And we've already given 200,000 of them to New York City. Mayor de Blasio needed them very badly, so we got them to Mayor de Blasio in New York City. They were very grateful. 8.1 million, and we're going to be increasing that number from 8.1 million to more. That's a lot of N95 respirators. Today, my team spoke with the CEO of Oshner Health and the CEO of LCMC, the two largest health systems in New Orleans. They said they feel that they currently have enough ventilators. I think a lot of people are going to have enough ventilators and masks and appreciate what we did and all of the things we've been doing with them, working with them. Uh, the CEO of Oshner. Warner Thomas, who's really been fantastic, I have to say, indicated a need for 230,000 surgical gowns, and I instructed FEMA to deliver them tomorrow, so they'll have the 230,000. That's Louisiana, New Orleans. Uh, 230,000 surgical gowns, they'll have them by tomorrow. We're expanding the role of the armed forces in our response effort because no one is better prepared to win a war than the United States military. And we are in a war, the invisible enemy, remember. Over 9,000 retired Army medical personnel have answered their nation's call and are now supporting field hospitals and medical facilities all across the country, like what I just told you, that Governor like that. Cuomo requested enough. we do something in Javits where we take it over. And uh, we're going to have that manned by the military. 
it's, it's very tough to get people, more people in the New York area, so we're going to have it manned by the military. Javits Center. National Guard members have been activated to help states build new treatment centers and assist in the seamless distribution of medical supplies. That includes National Guard. The National Guard is assisting very strongly because the states were, in many cases, unable to have uh, the delivery capability from warehouses and other places that we uh, put the supplies. So I've given approval to use the National Guards, the various National Guards in the uh, different states. And they're doing a fantastic job of not only protecting people, but delivering material. The Army Corps of Engineers has assessed more than 100 facilities in all 50 states and is rapidly building temporary hospitals and alternative care sites in many states, in New York, New Jersey, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Arizona, California, Colorado, Florida, Illinois, New Mexico, Oregon, Washington, Wisconsin, Ohio. They're doing a lot of work in just those states plus additionals that are being will be announced probably tomorrow, but they're doing some job. The Army Corps of Engineers, what a job they're doing, and FEMA, what a job they're doing. As we deploy the power of our military, we're also deploying the skill of our doctors, scientists, and medical researchers. We continue to study the effectiveness of hydroxychloroquine and other therapies in the treatment and prevention of the virus, and we will keep the American people fully informed on in our findings. Hydroxychloroquine I don't know. It's looking like it's having some good results. I hope that that would be a phenomenal thing, but we have it right now. In approximately now, it's increased to 1,500 people. I spoke with Dr. Zucker in New York, terrific guy, by the way. He's, we're doing a good job. And I spoke to Governor Cuomo last evening and this morning about it. So it's been there for about three and a half days, but I think, uh, and with many other places, it's being tested, too. And uh, we have a tremendous supply of it. We've ordered it in the uh, case that it works, and, and it's, uh, it could have some pretty big impacts, and we'll see what happens. My administration is also working to get relief to American workers and businesses in day one of the Paycheck Protection Program, as Kevin said. More than $3.5 billion in guaranteed loans have been processed to help small businesses keep their workers employed during the unprecedented time, this unprecedented time. And uh, Bank of America has been incredible. Of the big banks, Bank of America has really stepped forward and done a great job. And then you have the community banks, your smaller banks, and uh, we're already at $3.5 billion going out to uh, incredible people. But that's way ahead of schedule. The SBA and the Treasury are working around the clock, and our banking partners are really incredible. And they're ensuring that the money gets to small businesses as quickly as possible, and then the small business, in turn, take care of employees that they would have had to let go, and now they'll keep them. And that's good. And then they're going to open for business, and they're going to have their employees, and we'll try and get back to where we were. Eventually, we're going to supersede where we were. The energy industry has been especially hard hit in the crisis this afternoon. I met with Greg Garland of Phillips 66, Dave Hager of Devon Energy, Harold Hamm of Continental Resources, Jeff Hildebrand of Hillcorp Energy, Vicki Holub of Occidental Petroleum, Mike Summers of the American Petroleum Institute, Kelsey Warren of Energy Transfer Partners, Mike Worth of Chevron, and Darren Woods of ExxonMobil. I informed them that we will be making space available in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to let American producers store surplus oil that can be sold at a later time. Uh, there's a tremendous abundance of oil, uh, primarily because of the virus. The virus has just uh, stopped demand of everything, including oil. So we're working with our great energy companies. These are great companies. They employ tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. And they've kept America really going for a long time. And no big price hikes, no big anything. I mean, they've just kept it going, and now they got hit. But with all the jobs and all of the good that they do, we're going to make sure that they stay 
in good shape. America is engaged in a the oil business is, is historic battle to safeguard the lives of our citizens. Our future society, our greatest weapon is the discipline and determination of every citizen to stand. Oh, we're not making money this year. Look at you sitting on fucking a long time. Them to stay yeah, the CEO's got to fucking have a billion home. dollars in the this bank. This is ending. This will end. Oh, but I'm not You'll making profit this things, year. And then you're going to see some really good things. And uh, it's not going to be too long. We will heal our citizens, and we will care for our neighbors, and we will unleash the full might of the United States of America to vanquish the virus. And with that, I'd like to ask Mike Pence to come up, Vice President, say a few words, and have a couple of other uh, quick talks on a couple of subjects, and we'll take questions. And uh, it's a beautiful Friday in Washington, D.C., and our country's a great place, and we're getting better. We're getting better very quickly. This was artificially induced. We just said, they said, close it down. You have to close it down. We closed it down, and we're healing. We're going to get it better fast. So, Mike, if you could come up, say a few words, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the President just outlined a number of the decisions that he made today on the unanimous recommendation of the White House Coronavirus uh, Task Force. Uh, in addition, uh, some good news. Dr. Deborah Birx will reflect on a moment in some of the areas across America where we see evidence that the mitigation efforts, uh, the American people putting into practice uh, the President's coronavirus guidelines are, are having a positive effect. In fact, uh, today, uh, California and Washington State, where the coronavirus first emerged in our country, remain, the cases remain at a steady but low rate. And uh, I know, as Governor Newsom said yesterday, that they're not out of the woods yet. We continue to flow resources. Uh, but we want to commend uh, uh, people in those states and all across the country putting into practice the social distancing and all the measures that state and local leaders are advising and that uh, and that the president has been advising in the coronavirus guidelines for America. Uh, we're also continuing to track significant outbreaks in New York State, New Orleans, Detroit, Chicago, and Boston. And as the president indicated, we're prioritizing resources to support health care workers and to support those that are dealing with the coronavirus uh, in those communities. On the subject of testing, now more than 1.4 million tests have been performed across the country, and as you all are aware, some 266,000 Americans have tested positive for the coronavirus. Uh, Abbott Instruments, which uh, uh, now can perform a 15-minute test across uh, the country, uh, have literally 18,000 of their machines across the nation today. Uh, but uh, at the President's direction, FEMA is acquiring over 1,200 more machines to distribute to every state public health lab in America and also to our Indian health care service. And the big news, of course, over the last few days was that the FDA, once again in near record time, has approved an antibody a test developed by Celex, and we're continuing on the White House Coronavirus Task Force to examine ways that we can scale up uh, these rapid tests and these innovative new tests, not just to meet this moment, but to lay a foundation for uh, testing across the nation uh, in the months ahead. As the President mentioned, he met with uh, energy executives today and continues to engage with leaders of businesses all across the nation. We also held a, t held a teleconference today with commercial uh, retailers. On the President's behalf, we thanked them for the way that uh, people that operate malls and shopping centers around the country have have have, uh, have embraced and enacted the coronavirus guidelines uh, for America. It's had enormous impact uh, on on their businesses and their industries. But I heard uh, I heard from them their uh, uh, their patriotic commitment to put the health of their associates and their customers first, and it was deeply inspiring. Uh, on the subject of supplies, the President detailed uh, our work in that space. It continues to this day. Part of our air bridge, we had a flight arrive from China today to uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we continue to work each and every day watching the data about cases uh, to ensure that in particular, not just the personal protective equipment is available for the healthcare workers uh, that are on the front lines, but also that ventilators are available. 
as the uh, as as this epidemic makes its way through through regions and communities we are literally working hour by hour day by day uh, to make sure that patients families and healthcare providers have the equipment and the support that they need uh, as the president mentioned uh, uh, we've uh, we've seen over a billion and a half dollars of loans go out through the paycheck protection program today uh, we have uh, available for questions the head of the CDC today to speak about the new guidance uh, on uh, cloth face coverings. And uh, Secretary Azar, in a few moments, uh, will explain uh, uh, just how the president's decision to make sure that no American will ever have to worry about paying uh, for testing or for coronavirus treatment. Uh, I'm pleased to report that the president's direction, Medicaid and Medicare, already expanded to coronavirus treatment and testing early on. And of course, the president just indicated how major insurance companies across the country are not just waiving co-pays on testing, but they're now waiving co-pays for uh, at least 60 days on any, any coronavirus treatment. But now, as Secretary Azar will enumerate, and now we'll make sure that any American, even those that have no insurance, will be able to receive treatment in a hospital and never have to worry about the bill. Uh, I just give a general reminder to every American if there is evidence across the country that you're putting into practice uh, the coronavirus guidelines for America. Every American has a role to play, and I want to thank you on behalf of the President and, uh, and, and all of the American people for the way that you're stepping forward, you're engaging in the social distancing and doing the things that will slow the spread. We encourage you to keep on keeping on. We will get through this. America. Uh, we will get through the coronavirus to that day of renewed health, renewed prosperity that the president always describes. But we'll get through there sooner, and we'll get through there when we work together. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, Mr. President. Um, thank you for your words of discipline and determination. I guess that really describes what we're asking every American. Um, to really be disciplined about these guidelines and really determined to stay in that space of execution. You know, we are just in week three um, of this full guidance measure. We really uh, do appreciate the work of the citizens of California and Washington State because we do see that their curve is different. Their curve is different from New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. And we really believe that the work that every citizen is doing in those states is making a difference. And it will make a difference for the frontline healthcare providers. We also are deeply grateful that despite the way their curve looks today, they continue to get ready for a different potential so that they can ensure that patients, if they do get sick, have options and availability. To all the frontline healthcare workers in the what we have referred to as hot zones, areas where um, the number of cases are quite significant, the New Orleans, the New York City metro area, including New Jersey and Connecticut, the incredible work that the frontline healthcare workers are providing. We're really working now at a much more granular level, talking directly to hospitals to ensure that they have the supplies that they need in coordination with state and local governments. And to work, I think it, we discussed it yesterday, but I think it was quite clear also and reiterated by Governor Cuomo today that we have to support one another as each of these different metro areas and other areas move through their peak of new infection. <laughs> When we talked about it at the beginning of this week, we talked about this week and next week being incredibly difficult. And we want to recognize the number of Americans who have lost their lives to this virus and recognize the sacrifice that healthcare providers are making both in their care, but I think we're very uplifted by hearing their messages to families and their compassion for others to provide that kind of support to the individuals in the hospital. We continue to watch, um, in addition to the Chicago area, the Detroit area, 
and you all right? some developing oh concerns around been outside the state in the last 14 days and haven't been outside the state in the last so as you can see hmm. each of these will follow Here? their own curves so we'll be getting more and more of those case over outside time the state, outside the country in a very year. granular way to each and every one of you so that we can follow these Epidem epidemiologic curves as each of these states, counties, and communities move through this together in solidarity and really ensuring that we can move supplies creatively around the country to meet the needs of both the frontline healthcare providers but also every American who needs our support right now. Well, thank you, Mr. President, for your continued leadership as we battle the coronavirus. Uh, first, I want to thank all of the members of the HHS team and the frontline health care workers across America, including those who, those service workers who serve in our hospitals and our health care facilities, those who clean, those who deliver, those who stock the shelves, all those who are going into battle every day against the virus. Your country has asked you to serve as never before, and you have responded heroically. I'm going to provide a brief update on the administration's plans to cover the testing and treatment for the uninsured. Getting the uninsured access to the care they need is a top priority for President Trump. We are already rolling out the $1 billion in funding from the Families First Coronavirus Response Act to cover providers' expenses for testing and diagnosing the uninsured. The CARES Act, signed by the President, includes another $100 billion for health care providers. Under the President's direction, we will use a portion of that funding to cover providers' costs of delivering COVID-19 care for the uninsured, sending the money to providers through the same mechanism used for testing. As a condition of receiving funds under this program, providers will be forbidden from balance billing the uninsured for the cost of their care. Providers will be reimbursed at Medicare rates. We will soon have more specifics on how the rest of the $100 billion will go to providers. We're working to ensure that this funding is distributed in a way that is fast, fair, simple, and transparent. I'd also like to remind people that if you've lost employer insurance coverage, you have insurance options that you should look into you'd be eligible for a special enrollment period on the health care exchanges. And depending on your state, you may be eligible for Medicaid. Just as President Trump is working to ensure that COVID-19 treatment is paid for, he's working to support new treatment options for patients. Thanks to the President's leadership, many providers are trying different experimental therapies. And we need as much data as we can collect as quickly as possible on how these treatments are working. Today, Oracle has developed and is donating to the government and the American people a web portal and platform to gather crowdsourced real-time information from providers about how patients respond to potential therapeutics. While this doesn't replace the important work of clinical trials, it gives us data rapidly. If you are a doctor or a healthcare provider and you would like to help us, you can sign up today to begin reporting on your work there's a special registration page for providers at covid19.oracle.com. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go, Steve. If we could throw you out a little bit more of the advice on face mask, uh, what, do, what would people gain from wearing a mask, and why are you opposed to wearing one yourself? Well, I just don't want to wear one. It's too handsome. It fucks my face up, dude. You gotta see who I am. I just don't want to be doing. I don't know. Somehow sitting in the Oval Office, behind that beautiful Resolute desk, the great Resolute desk. I think wearing a face mask, as I greet presidents, prime ministers, dictators, kings, queens. I don't know. Somehow, I don't see it for myself. I just, I just don't. Know. Maybe I'll change my mind, but. This will pass, and uh, hopefully it'll pass very quickly. Now, with that being said, if somebody wants to, uh, you know, most people can just make something out of a certain material. So it's very well designated. It's very simple to do. Uh, I won't be doing it personally. It's a recommendation. Okay? And, uh, would you like to say something? I won't do it, but I'll tell you. Surgeon General, please. How do I feel about that? 
Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Mr. Secretary, and CDC Director Redfield. I especially want to thank the folks at the CDC. And it's a great question that you ask. It's a fair question that you ask. I want to unpack the evolution of our guidance on masks because it has been confusing to the American people. First of all, I want people to understand that the CDC, the World Health Organization, my office, and most public health and health organizations and professionals originally recommended against the general public wearing masks because based on the best evidence available at the time, it was not deemed that that would have a significant impact on whether or not a healthy person wearing a mask would contract COVID-19. We have always recommended that symptomatic people wear a mask because if you're coughing, if you have a fever, if you're symptomatic, you could transmit disease to other people. What has changed in our recommendation? Well, it's important to know that we now know from recent studies that a significant portion of individuals with coronavirus lack symptoms. They're what we call asymptomatic. And that even those who eventually become pre-symptomatic, meaning that they will develop symptoms in the future, can transmit the virus to others before they show symptoms. This means that the virus can spread between people interacting in close proximity. For example, coughing, speaking, or sneezing, yes, even if those people were not exhibiting now. symptoms. In light of this new evidence, CDC recommends and the task force recommends wearing cloth face coverings in public, public settings where other social distancing measures are difficult to maintain. Uh, these, these include places like grocery stores and pharmacies. We especially recommend this in areas of significant community-based transmission. It is critical, and the president mentioned this, the vice president mentioned this, it's critical to emphasize that maintaining six feet of social distancing remains key to slowing the spread of the virus. But CDC is additionally advising the use of simple cloth coverings to slow the spread of the virus and to help people who may have the virus and do not know it um, tr from transmitting it to others. The cloth face coverings recommended are not surgical masks or N95 respirators. Those are critical supplies that must continue to be reserved for healthcare workers and other medical first responders as recommended by the current CDC guidance. As the president also mentioned, cloth face coverings fashioned from household items or made at home from common materials at low cost can be used as an additional voluntary public health measure. This recommendation complements and does not replace the president's coronavirus guidelines for America, 30 days to slow the spread, which remains the cornerstone of our national effort to slow the spread of the virus. CDC is always, always looking at the data. We've told you that from the beginning. Dr. Burke said that every single press conference, we're looking at the data, we're evolving our recommendations, and new recommendations will come as the evidence dictates. So I wanna say if you do choose to wear a face mask, very important. Wash your hands first because you don't want to put on a face covering with a dirty hand. Do not touch your face while you are wearing the face covering because, again, you could take materials from the surface, germs from the surface, and bring it to your face. If you choose to wear a face covering, please, please leave the N95 mask, the medical supplies for the medical professionals, healthcare workers, and frontline workers. Know that this is not a substitute for social distancing. And remember, this is all about me protecting you and you protecting me. This is about us coming together as communities. And if people voluntarily choose to wear a face, uh, face covering, they're wearing it to protect their neighbors from getting the coronavirus because again, they could have asymptomatic spread. So Mr. President, thank you very much for that. Appreciate the opportunity to update everybody. Okay. Yeah. President, uh, Dr. Fauci last night recommended, uh, said that every state should have stay-at-home orders right now. Do you agree with that? Should every state in this country have the kind of stay-at-home orders that we now see in places like Washington? I leave it up to the governors. The governors know what they're doing. They've been doing a great job. I guess we're close to 90% anyway. And uh, states that we're talking about are not in jeopardy. No, I would leave it to the governors. I like. Uh, I like that from the standpoint of governing, and I like that from the standpoint of even our Constitution. Please. Mr. President, uh, to address the shortage of blood supply, the Food and Drug Administration announced yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
uh, updated the pandemic uh, crisis action plan, which has been the playbook from which we've been working, the pandemic flu plan, the again, the action plan from which we have been working that coordinates the whole of government, whole of economy approach here. So uh, we've all been very focused on pandemic preparedness. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, but this particular strain of pandemic who would who would have known this particular strain? The Secretary of Azar, if you were preparing for a pandemic, if this government were preparing for a pandemic, why is it we don't have a, enough masks? Why is it we don't have enough medical equipment in this Previous country? Previous administrations gave us very little ammunition for the military and very little shelf space. Let, let me just tell you, you know it, you know the answer. Uh, the previous administration, uh, the shelves were empty. The shelves were empty. So what you should do is speak to the people from the previous administration, Jim, and ask them that question. Because the shelves were empty. And you know what else? The military shelves were also empty. We had no ammunition, literally. Now, that was said by one of your favorite generals. We have, sir, we have no ammunition. Guess what? We had very little medical supply also. All right. Uh, 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 go ahead. We'll get it back. We'll get you back. We'll get you back, please. What about that? Or she might say, we'll get you back. Please, go ahead. So I wanted to ask about the DPA. So you said that there will be a ban on exporting of all, what does it cover? So masks, gloves, what else is included in that order? And are you But if somebody ordered, if Italy, if Spain was big problems, these, have, these are countries with tremendous problems, France, if they ordered, if they have long-term orders and they're in there and they want to get certain things, uh, I've let them go out in certain instances because I think it's only fair. They have problems that are proportionately or relatively bigger than our problems. So if they ordered something and they're waiting for, as an example, masks made here and going to Italy, uh, I'm not going to be stopping that. I think it would be very unfair. And by the way, speaking about being fair and unfair, Two very big cruise liners, as you know. I allowed them to dock today. We worked with the governor of Florida, as you know, Ron DeSantis, and we worked on it, and we had uh, tremendous security, and we took the sick people, and uh, we're working with them. We have doctors. We have great doctors, military doctors, and from a humane standpoint, not that we're in love with this. These are two massive ships, but we have to take care of people. We have to take care. We sent... Uh, Many back to Canada, the Canada, the Canadians came and worked very closely with us, as did the UK. We had a lot of people from the UK, and we take we took care of the Americans. We took care of the sick. We had some people very sick. I think we have three to four, maybe five people that had died on the boat, the, one of the boats, actually. And uh, we had to take care of these people. So we could have let them float aimlessly into the ocean looking for port, as they've been doing for a long time. Uh, and I made the decision we had to take them in. And Homeland Security and a lot of other people did a great job. But uh, we had to help people. These are people that were very, very sick. Some were dying. Some died. Please. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, your staff today said that people in close proximity to you and the vice president will get a coronavirus test. I'm wondering, are you concerned that the people you've been hanging around with may have the virus? No, I'm not concerned. No. I, I had a test yesterday. Well, the order for people to meet with you or talk to you, why? I don't why, know. I mean, I just I heard from the oil executives. These are people. Most of them had not had the test, and frankly, I think they left the room feeling good about a lot of things, but they felt good about the test. This was a test that took, uh, I guess, 13 minutes to have it finalized. They, they took the test. Uh, I don't know. I didn't know they were doing that. Maybe they did it just for them. I don't know. But it seems that a lot of people, because now we have tests that really work well, Abbott, in this case, Abbott. We have other tests being developed right now that are also fantastic. The original tests, the ones we inherited, Jim, as an example, they were, they were broken. They were obsolete. They were not good tests, and that's what we got stuck with. Uh, we've developed some incredible tests, but this took 13 to 15 minutes and they were all uh, fine. Go ahead, finish, finish your question. So to, the, the problem some people have, have raised is that if the U.S. stopped exporting, what you would have is other countries then deciding reciprocally that they are going to stop exporting, and that the result of that then will be a net decrease in the amount of supplies that American doctors, American hospitals have. How do you address that? Well, I address it in the following manner. We really are very well supplied. We are not the principal. It's the hospitals, the states, the cities. They're supposed to get everything they can and stock up in case something like this happens. But nobody could ever have assumed that something like this happened. So we started supplying. We uh, brought tremendous amounts to 
New York today and over the last few days. We brought him to Louisiana. We brought him to Michigan. We brought him to Los Angeles. A lot of equipment. Uh, you read the amount of masks that we had. I think I said over 8 million masks. The uh, N95 masks, the you know more expensive, more complicated, better, whatever masks, the ones they want to use in the hospitals. Uh, we have millions of them now, and we've given them to a lot. We sent uh, to Bellevue in New York today. That was from Mayor de Blasio, 200,000 of them. Uh, but we have 8.1 million. We're going to have more than that. And we're getting them from various sources, including the military. We're rapidly then replacing them because we have to replace them in case there's a another emergency. Uh, I would be of gowns, too. We have many gowns being delivered and have been delivered. Uh, our people have done an incredible job. Most people have said, now, and I said this yesterday, uh, our have like said, that. thank yeah, you very much, great job. Yeah, if there's well, any crack down, yeah, the some one cases, not in all cases at all. Up when I said, I can, like, here's a thousand it, ventilators. How many do you want? We want one thousand. Here's a thousand. Dry some more before I brush that off. And brush you know, we're going to add another five thousand. Is that good? Here. They said, "Wow, that's great." And then if Jim Acosta goes and says, more, "Are you happy with the president?" Enough. No, we should have given us ten thousand. That's what's happening. Yeah, when I add the second layer of gold on there, we just push it out to the side. And that's a shame because we have done a job like nobody's ever done a job. But we've just delivered a lot like of masks, we've point. just delivered a lot of gowns and protective gear. Uh, but you know, you're talking about a massive, yeah. you're talking about a massive number, but I as of this like morning, it. people were very, very happy. See, what I want to do is ask you for a bailout. Yeah, we're about to get out of here. As I look at the clock, it's like, it was really two hours ago, discussion back. discussion and well, asking. Yep. I can't believe we listened to the president the whole time. The concept <laughs> of tariffs, uh, because as you know, this was a dispute. All right, guys, so uh, honestly, honestly did not know what I was going to do with this gold leaf or how it was going to turn out. I've just been sitting here playing with a couple of different techniques, and it's, it's looking how I want it. I want it to have, like, this dispersed effect. So we're going to let this layer dry, and then we're going to come back again later on and diffuse it some more. And then all we have to do is just go back in the hair again and sharpen up the edges and everything like that. But I already anticipated that. That's why I didn't want to do too much of the hair before I got the background done. So. But that shit looks hot, though. All right. Appreciate y'all chilling in here with me in the afternoon uh, quarantine stream. Be back here first thing in the morning. Uh, in the morning, I'll probably just set this to the side actually and start working on these sneaker uh, colors. And we'll check that out and see how far we can get on those shoes. Uh, until next time, peace.